So in the last example video, um, we looked at this collection of four vectors in R3 and determined that uh, this set is linearly dependent. It's not linearly independent. Um, the first way we approached it is we set up the equation. So some scalar times this vector, some scalar times this vector and so on equals the zero vector. Rho reduced it, uh, looked like this, but augmented with the if it's equal to the zero vector, we augmented it with the zero vector here. Uh, we were trying to determine whether that has a non-trivial solution. Since there is a non-pivot column here in column four, C4 is a free variable, which means there are non there are non-trivial solutions, so it's linearly dependent. And then I pointed out, well, you've got four vectors in R3. That's automatically linearly dependent. Okay, so we know this set is linearly dependent. Now, asking another question, do the vectors span R3? So they span R3. If we can take any vector in R3, let me write it as B1, B2, B3, and write it as a linear combination of these four vectors. So if we did C1 times the first vector plus C2 times the second vector, okay, and you get the idea. zero to negative two, I'm sorry for my handwriting here, uh, equals b1, b2, b3. For some numbers, b1, b2, b3. If this equation has a solution, so it's consistent for any values of b1, b2, b3, so for any vector in R3, uh, then yes, the vectors span R3. So we need to see what the solution set to that vector equation looks like. So suppose we set up a matrix where your vectors uh, v1, v2, v3, v4, are your columns. Try to write them more, much more clearly this time. Augmented with b1, b2, b3. So imagine we have some specific values there. And then we row reduce it to see what the solution set looks like. Um, my b1, b2, b3 are getting in my way. Then the row reduction would happen exactly the same way on the left side here. So it would reduce to what we got in that last example video. So if you go through the steps for row one plus row two and so on, uh, you're going to get this. Well, we stopped here. Um, we didn't bother getting a, a one in this position here. Now, as we did those row operations, so say four times row one plus row two and so on, uh, the values here are going to get a bit scrambled. So just you're going to have some number in each of these positions. We don't really need to figure out exactly what they are because we're allowing B1, B2, B3 to be any number. So this is just any number in this last or, or any value for each of these entries in the last column. So we're wondering, is this system consistent or inconsistent? Well, since you have a pivot in every row, then there's no way that you're going to have a row with a pivot way over here in the constant column. It can't happen because uh, already we see we've got a pivot in every row. So no way are you going to end up with a pivot over here, which means that there's no way you're going to end up with an inconsistent system. Remember, the system is inconsistent when you get 0, 0, 0, 0, and then non-zero number here. So based on the row reduction that we did, that, that's not going to happen with these vectors. Uh, so the vectors do span R3. This will be consistent for any values of B1, B2, B3. I'll, I'll write that down. Consistent for any numbers, eh, numbers B1, B2, B3. Um, okay. So let's go to the broader question. Is this a basis? Well, we know the answer is no just from part one, because they're linearly dependent. A basis has to be a linearly independent set. They do, though, span R3. Whoa, breaking my board here. Um, okay, they do span R3, so they meet that second condition. And notice, turns out, so we don't really need this last column. Notice that if we delete the last column, then still we've got a pivot in every row, so this will be consistent for any values of b1, b2, b3. And now 
you also have a pivot in every column. So now the columns here are linearly independent. If we see so if we get rid of this and now augment this thing with the zero vector here. Oh, wait, Frank, come here. I wanted Frank to make a guest appearance. Oh, he's heavy. Here, if you get any interruptions, um, this is Frank, it's his fault. Okay. Uh, Cause he barked in an earlier video and I deleted it cause it was too scary. Okay, sorry. Now he's gonna be knocking over the board. Um, so we are saying, if you delete the last column, if, it, if it's augmented with zero, zero, zero here, then now you will have only the trivial solution, no free variables. So that's the idea when you're forming a basis, or if we just delete this last vector, this collection with containing just the first three vectors is a basis for R3, because it's they are linearly independent, and if you just ignore the last column, they still do span R3. This thing is consistent, uh, no matter what numbers you put in the last column. So. If we wanted to form a basis, that would be the way to do it. Just grab the first three. And that's uh, a basis, a basis for R3. Uh, bases for a vector space are not unique. There's, you can write, there's, I, we, I showed a standard basis a few uh, a previous video, where a standard basis for R3 is just the unit vectors, one, zero, 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 one, zero. Uh, but here's another one. Here's another collection of linearly independent vectors that span R3. So here's another basis. Um, so the, the actual vectors in a basis are not unique. The number of vectors in any basis for R3 will always be three. Uh, the number of vectors is, is uh, unique for that vector space, or it is specific to the vector space. But that's a theorem later on. I'm getting ahead again.